So the final talk of the session is by David Freeman, who's a postdoc at Stanford uh, on homomorphic temperatures. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm originally from Minnesota, and so when I was invited to give a talk at uh, BWCA, I thought that meant the Boundary Waters Canoe area, um, and I didn't really know what homomorphic signatures had to do with canoeing. Um, but then uh, I was told it actually stands for Beyond Worst Case Analysis, and that made a lot more sense because uh, cryptography is, um, in fact, all about going beyond worst case analysis. And in particular, if we have our two uh, famous characters of cryptography, Alice and Bob, um, Alice has some kind of key that uh, is chosen at random from some distribution, um, maybe, you know, maybe some authority, or maybe she generated it herself, or maybe she got it from Bob. Uh, and she sends over some kind of secure communication that's a function of, of this key and of the message she's trying to send. And then Bob applies some kind of decryption or verification or whatever he wants to do. Uh, the adversary gets to see this communication and is working on uh, breaking the security of the system. And if the system is designed well, then to break the system, the adversary has to solve some kind of computational problem. Uh, and in particular, uh, if, the, if the system is secure, this means that the problem is hard on average for the distribution of keys chosen by Alice, or that Alice uses. So some uh, problems that we look at in, in public key cryptography in particular uh, there's the discrete logarithm problem, where if we're given uh, sort of an integer mod p and that raised to some exponent, to compute the exponent. Uh, the factoring problem, you know, decompose a number into its, uh, into its prime factors. Uh, the shortest vector problem, given a lattice, computes, uh, you know, compute the shortest vector or up to some constant factor, the shortest, or some polynomial factor, the shortest vector. Uh, and these are all problems that uh, on average, have been used with average case distributions to con construct public key crypto systems. Um, there's some connections to, to worst case here. Uh, for the discrete log, we can take a, for a fixed prime p, we can take, a, or fixed group, we can uh, take a worst case instance over that group. Um, and re so we can reduce an average case instance to a worst case instance there. Uh, but between different uh, groups, there's no known connection. For the shortest vector problem uh, in lattices, um, as Luca mentioned in his talk on Monday, there's for certain distributions of lattices, there's connections to uh, to finding lat solving lattice problems in the worst case. So I want to talk about one thing in particular that we've worked on. Um, joint with Dan Bonet in the back there, and also some, uh, also John Katz and Brent Waters. Uh, and that's uh, cryptography applied to network coding. So just as a review, uh, describe a little bit of what network coding does. So the idea is we have a, a sender with some data, some file, that needs to be transmitted through a network of routers and get to one or more recipients. So what the sender does uh, is breaks the file into blocks, mixes them up in some, in some way, sends them on to the first level of routers. The next uh, level of routers uh, applies its own transformation to the data and passes it on. Final level applies further transformations uh, and uh, sends on to the recipients. And then uh, these transformations are ultimately invertible, and the recipient can um, can recover the original data. So more specifically, we're looking, we're going to look at, uh, well, so I want to mention actually this can apply to online or offline applications. Um, in particular, it's, it's been suggested as a good way to, to download movies illegally. So in particular, I want to look at linear network coding. So uh, specifically, if we want to transmit a file, we write the file as a sequence of vectors defined over some finite field. So these are uh, m vectors, uh, each with n components, defined over the finite field fp. And the, the coding part comes in where we, we do what we call augment each vector. So we take the ith vector and append to it the ith unit vector. 
So this, is incre this increases the length of the vectors by m, the number, the number of the total vectors. Uh, so ideally, m is going to be smaller than n. Then what we do is we send, the, send these augmented vectors into the network. Now each intermediate node receives some set of vectors, chooses random, random uh, elements of the finite field, and forwards the linear combination of vectors with those coefficients on to its neighbors. Uh, and maybe, maybe sends multiple vectors with different coefficients. So to decode, the recipient receives a vector that's got some data, some data part, w prime, and then some, uh, some coefficients in these, in these augmentation coordinates. And since we started with unit vectors, these, these coordinates indicate exactly which linear combination was used to make the vector w from the initial vectors. So it's c1 times v1 plus you know, up to cm times vm. So then if we get a full rank system, if we get m vectors where, the, where this augmentation part is linearly independent, or, or makes a full rank set, then we can simply uh, invert this matrix and recover the original vectors. So in, in particular, um, if we get any basis of the, if, if the ultimate recipient gets any basis of the subspace spanned by the initial vectors, it can recover the, the vectors. And it's, uh, it's been shown that this, this uh, technique can achieve achieves the maximum channel capacity and is resilient to packet loss. If we, you know, if we miss a packet, we have other linear combinations and, and can continue to decode. The problem comes if, if there is a corruption or either random or malicious errors. Um, we'll, look at, we'll look at malicious errors because we, we think you know, we want the, the worst kind of adversary in mind. Um, so if we have a, a corrupt router, the sender sends, a, sends its vectors to this router, the, the adversary can pollute this vector, uh, and it gets sent on to the next level. The next level doesn't know that it's receiving polluted data, mixes it up with all the other data it's got, it's been given, and by the time it gets to the recipient, the data is completely corrupted, and the recipient can't, can't recover anything uh, that's relating to the original file. So this is a problem. So we want it. So the idea is to use uh, cryptographic techniques to try to mitigate this problem. So here's some some ideas that don't work. Uh, we could sign each of the initial vectors sent into the system. Uh, the problem here is that the received vectors ultimately are different from the initial vectors. So there's there's no way to verify the signature. Right? To verify a signature, you need the message and the signature, and the message is gone. Another, tr another attempt would be to sign the original file, decode using the network coding, and then verify the signature. The problem is uh, if we receive uh, a lot of packets and many of them are corrupt, we must try lots of subsets until we find one that can say contains only valid vectors. And in particular, we probably have to try exponentially many subsets, so that's not a good solution either. So the idea uh, that we... Uh, that we proposed, building, building on uh, prior work, is what we call uh, linearly homomorphic signatures. So the idea, sort of given a very basic example of two vectors, is if we're given two vectors v1 and v2, uh, and then that have signatures on them, generated in some way, the idea is if we take the linear combination av1 plus bv2, there's some kind of combined algorithm that takes the signatures and these combination coefficients and produces a signature on this combined vector that you know that validates that this is uh, this is a good vector, uh, and if we so using this combined algorithm, if we have signatures on all the initial vectors v1 through vm, we can obtain sig all sign signatures on any vector in this space spanned by them. So this allows us to would allow us to achieve hop by hop containment. Uh, each intermediate router could verify the signature on the received vectors before using it in its own combinations and passing it on. And then ultimately, the recipient can just drop any vector that has an invalid signature. So there are some some uh, previous proposals um, which have which go towards solving this problem uh, and have a few drawbacks. One is that the 
the public key must be refreshed after every transmission. So this isn't very useful if we want to send, uh, say, multiple files through the network, then there becomes the an equ problem of sending the public key through the network also. Um, and also, these, the, some of these schemes are not, optim not optimal in terms of uh, generating large signatures, uh, say, using the group uh, you know, of integers mod p, then uh, the signatures produce m group elements per vector, and ideally we'd like, say, one group element per vector. So what uh, we've done in a series of papers uh, with Binet, Katz, and Waters is we've, well, first we put a, uh, gave a well-defined security model for this network coding problem, uh, and systems in this model can use a single key, single public key to, set, to sign many files. I'll, I'll present two different schemes that are efficient uh, in the sense of um, sort of a minimum, minimum amount of uh, signature size per, uh, per vector signed. Uh, one is based on a log type assumption uh, and these, this can be used this, uh, for authenticated vectors defined over large finite fields. And one is based on a lattice assumption. This can be used to authenticate vectors defined over small finite fields. Um, and interestingly, we don't know how to do you know, the other way using the other assumption. Um, and then at the end, I'll describe an extension uh, to authenticate not only linear combinations, but also polynomial functions on signed data. Uh, and this concept uses ideals in number fields. So. A little bit about what exactly goes into a network coding signature. What are, what are we trying to construct? So we need some kind of setup algorithm that takes in a security parameter that just says how hard, uh, you know, how hard the problem is for the adversary to solve. We want to get out some kind of public key and secret key. The signature algorithm is going to take in a secret key and a vector, uh, and also uh, what we call this file identifier, this ID, and the idea is that the ID binds together all the vectors in, the, in a single file. Uh, so to sign one file, you sign each of the vectors with the same ID, and this prevents the adversary from mixing vectors from different files. Right? If the, if the ad, so the, the security property will be that if I try to combine uh, vectors signed with two different identifiers, that's not going to verify. Then we have a verification algorithm, simply checks whether we have a valid signature. And then the homomorphic property uh, is in what we call a combined algorithm. Uh, and it's, as I, as I outlined earlier, takes in the linear combination coefficients and the signatures and outputs a new signature. And the idea is that um, if we get good signatures on v1, v2, the new signature authenticates AV, oh, typo, AV1 plus BV2 at the bottom. So, and briefly, what, uh, what does it mean for the, for the system to be secure? Well, there, there's two ways that we could, uh, we could break the system. We could produce a forged signature. One is to produce a signature for some vector that the adversary has never seen before. So there's a formal model in terms of a game, but just at a high level, um, the idea, this is sort of like an ordinary uh, public key signature scheme where uh, forgery is, is a new signature on a previously unseen message, or a valid signature on a previously unseen message. Um, so the more, more interesting forgery type of forgery uh, is a valid signature that belongs to a file that we have seen before, but where this vector is not in the span of the vectors that define this file. So again, the signature scheme can authenticate anything in the span of v1 through vm, and the security property is that I can't authenticate, can't easily authenticate anything outside of this span. So in particular, this means that this V star could not have been formed honestly as a linear combination of the initial vectors. Okay, so now I'll, I'll give a very, very sort of high level overview of the construction with some, some building blocks and uh, just to give a sense of uh, how we do these sorts of things. Um, so the first ingredient we call homomorphic hashing. So this is a hash function that takes uh, an n-tuple of group elements in some finite group and the vector that we want to hash, so this, this thing in fp to the n, we think of as their data vector, uh, and I'll put some group element. 
And we want it to be collision resistant in the sense that for a random choice of, of uh, in a couple of group elements in g to the n, it's hard to find a collision. So we think of this, uh, this first argument, g to the n, is indexing the hash function, and then the hash function takes, um, you know, acts on vectors. And the second property is homomorphic, that for a fixed uh, index g, it's linear uh, in the argument, in the vector. So I guess linear, you know, h of plus w is h of v times h of w in the group g. So some examples, uh, it's actually fairly easy to construct these, these uh, things from, from crypto primitives. Um, using uh, the f uh, multiplicative group mod p, the... Uh, we can hash the function just, uh, it's indexed by some tuple of elements, g1 through gn, uh, in, in the group g. And the hash function is raise gi to the vi and multiply all those together. And uh, we can show that if I can uh, find a collision for a random choice of, of uh, gi, then we can compute discrete logarithms in this group. Uh, another instance is... Um, using vectors over a finite field. So here the group is fp to the m. Uh, think of m as smaller than n. Uh, and the hash function is, again, compute, compute the linear combination, vi times gi, and sum them all up. Uh, here uh, we require this, the vector to be low norm. So say it's a 0, 1 vector. Um, so if this is true, then uh, the collision, any, and then a collision can be used to compute a short vector in a certain n-dimensional lattice, and this is a problem that uh, we believe to be hard. Uh, I guess I should note that the, the p's in these two different constructions, uh, the first, this p has to be very large, exponential size. The second construction, the p can be, can be polynomial in, in n. So the second ingredient uh, is a, a linear hash and sign signature. So this is a signature that uh, has a sign algorithm and a verify algorithm uh, that has two properties. So first is a secure signature uh, when, when a message by hashing the message uh, and then applying the sign algorithm. And so, we're, so as long as this is secure when the hash function is viewed as a random oracle. So, uh, viewed as producing a random output on, on previously unseen input. Uh, and the second property is that if I don't hash, I want this to be a homomorphism uh, from maybe from the group to itself or maybe to a different group. So uh, RSA is, is a sig basic RSA signatures is an example of, of, this, prop of this signature with this property. Um, the textbook RSA signature algorithm is take your, your, your message x and raise it to the 1 over e mod n. Uh, and if I instead hash first, then I get it, and then sign, then I get a signature that's secure in the random oracle. And security, uh, well, it's based, I mean, we, we, it's necessary that it be hard to factor n, but um, it's, we, the reduction actually is to the RSA problem, which is the, exactly that of inverting um, we're finding x to 1 3 mod n. And it's not known that these two are equivalent. Um, a second example is the signatures of Gentry, Pikert, and Vaikun Tanatan. And this is a lattice based signature where the public key is some uh, matrix. So m by n matrix, we think of it as a, a short wide matrix over a finite field. And the signature is some short vector. Uh, so short vector s such that a times s is x mod, mod p. Uh, and the security of this system in the, in the random oracle model re, uh, comes down to finding short vectors in a certain lattice related to the matrix A. Okay, so we have these two ingredients and we can put them together. Um, and so at a high level, this is uh, how the construction works. For the security proof, we actually have to go into a little more detail, um, and we don't we don't have a a black box uh, proof at the moment. Um, but basically, the idea is if we have some cryptographic hash, hash function that's going to hash the the file identifier to this group g to the n, a homomorphic hash function that takes something in g to the n vector over fp, give the group element, 
and then a hash and Titan signature that takes that signs group elements. Um, so basically, so our home, we define our homomorphic signature in sort of like you know composing these three primitives. Um, in particular, we take the file identifier, apply the cryptographic hash function, use that as the index for the homomorphic hash function, and hash the vector to be signed, and then apply the, the signature scheme. And to verify, we simply verify the you verify the, uh, the basic signature. And because of the homomorphic property, um, to combine, we simply compute the sort of the equivalent of the linear combination on the signature. So if, if the groups were written multiplicity, multiplicatively, um, to combine sigma 1 and sigma 2 with coefficients a and b, we used to take sigma 1 to the a1 times sigma 2 to the b2. And basically this is correct because the sign algorithm uh, computes a homomorphism uh, from fp to the n to this group g prime for a fixed file identifier. So this is where um, uh, we re, you know, require a new identifier to be chosen for each file. So, some instantiations. So, in the for, in original paper with Binet, Katz, and Waters, we used a, the discrete log hash function plus the Binet, Lynch, Shaham signatures, which use uh, pairings on elliptic curves. So, we have to work in an elliptic curve group. Um, but the security is based on the computational Diffie-Hellman problem in the elliptic curve group. So, given uh, three elements, g, g to the a, and g to the b, we want to compute g to the ab. So um, again, uh, it's, if we could compute discrete logs, then we could solve this problem. It's not known that the converse is true. Um, but what the, the security theorem says that if the, uh, any adversary that can break the signature scheme can solve the, the CDH problem in this group. Uh, there's follow-up work uh, by Janelle, Katz, Kravchik, and Rabin uh, using so the same hash function, essentially. Um, plus RSA signatures, and their security is based on the RSA problem. Um, and again, they, 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 these proofs model the hash function, the cryptographic hash function, as a random oracle. And there's been some work at uh, sort of more, more complicated constructions where, without random oracles. Um, so there's another instantiation we, we've more recently come up with using lattices, uh, using the lattice-based hash function that I described earlier and the GPV signatures. And here, the security is based on the small integer solution problem, which is given some, some integer lattice, so some uh, discrete subgroup or some, some uh, full rank subgroup of z to the n. And some parameter, we just want to find a vector in this lattice that has norm at most that parameter. And one reason that, uh, well, here's some reasons that we looked at lattices for constructing this. Uh, the first is that we can admit we can use small field sizes p. Um, so for, in the say the discrete log scheme, we needed discrete logs to be to be hard in a group of order p. So p had to be exponential size. Um, with the lattice scheme, we can use small p even p equals two. Uh, and so this is uh, an advantage if we want um, to do network coding with the smaller uh, smaller vectors. Uh, another advantage is there are no known quantum attacks to the scheme. There are quantum attacks to, for discrete log and factoring. Um, and then another, another um, advantage of, of interest to the, perhaps to the, the theory crowd is that uh, the security, uh, for, so the distribution of lattices we use in the scheme uh, admits a reduction to the worst case hardness of uh, lattice problems. Uh, this build, building on work of Itai and uh, Michancho and Regev. So in, I guess, the last couple minutes, um, I want to talk about an, an extension. And this uh, extension is, a mo well, or I guess a more, a more, generated prob more general problem. Uh, and I'll motivate this with an example. So we have, we have Alice, who's wanting to sign some data. Say she's a, she's a professor in the class. And she wants to store the data on the untrusted server. So she, she's got a list of grades uh, of her students in her class. She wants to sign each of the grades and store the data on the server. Uh, so say the first student uh, is Anne, has a score of 91, and gets a signature stored that authenticates that um, is the student Anne, is the score of 91, and that this is the grades database. 
So this grades, this tag grades plays the role of what we were talking about as the file identifier in, in the previous construction. So Alice does this and then she, then she goes away and we have the server and sometime later Bob is a student in the class and he wants to uh, query some function of the grades data. Uh, maybe he wants to know the mean, wants to know whether he was above, above or below. So he queries the server with some function. The server returns the value of the function as well as some signature that authenticates that this function, basically it authenticates that this function was computed correctly. So if the mean, he queries the mean and it's 87.3, uh, the signature sigma would authenticate the fact that the value is 87.3, this is from the grades database, and that the function requested was the mean function. So, so this is sort of a, a more, more general problem. So the question is what kind of functions, so we want, we want a signature scheme that is, that is homomorphic in this sense, that can uh, authenticate computations of data. And the question is what kind of functions can we achieve this for? So the network coding signatures that I, that I talked about uh, you know, up till now, this can solve the problem for linear functions. So if I want to know the mean, um, then then we can use a network coding signature. And what, uh, in, in uh, work from Eurocrypt this year, um, we can show that using the, uh, one of the lattice constructions for network coding signatures, if we change the lattices to use uh, ideals and number fields, which can be viewed as lattices, um, if you think about them the right way, then we can solve this solve the problem for polynomial functions of bounded degree. So instead of just querying the mean, Bob can, can query a, the standard deviation, or maybe the, so the square of the standard deviation, um, could do least squares fitting to data, because that's polynomial computations. Um, and of course, the million dollar question here is can we do fully homomorphic signatures, could we come up with a scheme that allowed Bob to query arbitrary functions of the data and uh, have the result be authenticated? And I guess with that, I will stop and open up for questions. Um, the ones I talked about do. There are um, some network coding schemes that don't use random oracles. Um, they're considerably more complicated. Um, they're sort of built on identity-based encryption ideas. Um, but there, there are non-random oracle constructions. And for, for using a random oracle, um, you know, are these problems maybe be solved using um, so, yeah, so a CS proof can, um, uh, can be used to solve this problem. Um, I had a slide in a, in a different talk where I addressed this. Um, the, what we're looking for here is, um, um, sort of efficiency. So, uh, sort of a CS proof can, can achieve the same goal, um, in terms of functionality. Um, but we, our systems are much more efficient and you know, they don't require um, you know, the, the PCP thing and, and uh, um, they can actually be you know, done fairly, fairly efficiently.